Welcome to the Out of Home Insider. Today's show will certainly challenge some of the things you believe to be true and expand your mind on topics that maybe you've never been comfortable talking about but are incredibly important to talk about. With me today is Mrs. Ulbricht. Mrs. Ulbricht is the mother of Ross Ulbricht, who you'll learn about here today. We connected because she's got a billboard up in Times Square it's bringing awareness back to Ross's case at a time that's maybe never been more relevant. Topics like privacy and freedom of speech, and we're so grateful for you to be here today, Mrs. Ulbricht. Thanks for joining the show. So happy to be here, Tim. Call me Lynn. All right, please. we'll call you Lynn for the duration. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, no, thank you so much for the opportunity. Certainly. So for folks that may not be familiar with Ross's story, if you could just tell us about Ross, about the Silk Road, and give, give the audience an idea of Ross's case. Sure, and it's a very complicated case, so FYI. But, and it was, uh, happened, uh, his, uh, the whole thing happened almost seven years ago, but it is still very relevant. Um, so Ro Ross is my son, and he, um, at a young, impressionable age in graduate school, he um, got very involved with the libertarian movement and with the Ron Paul campaign and started um, studying Austrian economics. And these are all, you know, philosophies of free markets and freedom. And um, he got very passionate about this. At the same time, he discovered the cryptocurrency Bitcoin and saw the potential for monetary freedom with that. And he wanted to bring an experience of a free market, a truly free market to people so they could, they could experience it and maybe you know, want that. And at first he created a video game which uh, didn't get published, he did, almost did, but didn't. And so then he turned to the internet and created um, a website called The Silk Road, which was a, it was an open market, it was um, and a free market, so that uh, it's kind of like eBay. And uh, people could buy and sell what they chose, except if it hurt a third party. It was very much based on the um, non-aggression principle of voluntary interaction, no force, no violence. So for example, there was no child pornography permitted or anything related to pedophilia because that hurts that third party, which is the child, or, or stolen property or um, fraudulent things. So, um, you know, things that defrauded people. So weapons, you know, and go on and on. And this is all in the government's evidence, uh, but it did, did permit drugs, the administration of the site, which there were, there were many people involved, uh, believed, and many libertarians believe that um, it's a choice. Drugs are a choice between two people mm -hmm. buying and selling. And we can argue that, and I'm not defending that. I'm just saying that was their philosophy as long as no third party was harmed. Um, and it became very big, <laughs> I think, because it was anonymous and private, because that was a big concern was the, how our privacy was being eroded. And so it was private, it was anonymous, and Bitcoin was also private and anonymous. And so um, it did attract a lot of drug sales, mostly user amounts of cannabis. And that's all um, also backed up with um, research and all you know things on our website, freeross.org. Now, just before I go on about that, um, we have been fighting a um, media distortion battle for years. And only recently, because we were talking about the billboard that's up in Times Square now about Ross, a, a, a small publication called Times Square Chronicles wrote about it and said that Silk Road was most known for drugs, child exploitation, and human trafficking. Now, this is an absolute lie. Um, the Yes, drugs, but no human trafficking was on the site and no child exploitation of any kind was permitted. I did try to correct it with the uh, author and um, I emailed and I tweeted. As far as I know, it still has that lie up there. Uh, and this is the kind of thing the media, I feel like is very sloppy about and lazy about and just says stuff, you know, and it's absolutely not true. Uh, and I can back that up with government evidence and exhibits at trial. 
that's right that's been but, proven time oh, and time again over and over you yes know, it, it, it was not an effective marketplace for firearms we can go to walmart right. or instagram and buy those things pedophilia wasn't allowed and there's more of it on the on the general internet and and I, I agree, right? The investigative part of investigative journalism has really fallen by the wayside. And the extent of that research was probably a Google search and hey, here's a, you know, a regurgitation of something that I found online. Some other lie has been that's out there. Echoing the lies, right? Absolutely. And I just wanted to say that because we are talking, it was written about specifically the billboard. And so, but anyway, that, so what happened was that, um, there were many people involved running uh, the Silk Road, but Ross became the trophy and was tried in the Southern District of New York and was given the most outrageous sentence of no, non no violent charges whatsoever of double life plus 40 years without parole for a young first time nonviolent offender for something he did on a computer when he was 26 years old. This is like two centuries or something. I mean, it adds up to it's it's such an abuse of government power. And I think because of that, because of the, um, you know, excessive and really unconstitutional sentence, because the Eighth Amendment says no cruel or unusual punishment. It's very unusual. It's very cruel. Very. Um, that, and also because the site was the first proof of use of Bitcoin. No one had heard of Bitcoin before and really put Bitcoin on the map. And so many people, including the, the person who financed the billboard, uh, many libertarians and people who, uh, involved in Bitcoin um, support Ross still because they understand his intentions. They understand that he was trying to do good. You can say it was um, a mistake, you know, and all that. Yeah, Ross even says it was. However, he was young and enthusiastic and he made a mistake. Should he have to die? In a cell for that and uh that's not american that's not should not happen no nonviolent person should get a life sentence in my opinion and, and really, really what ross did and especially in that time frame is more akin to you know the achievements that we celebrate of a uh, mark zuckerberg or a jeff bezos yeah. he created a community and a marketplace transacting i think at over over a billion and a half dollars at one point now that's an exaggerated figure but is it's that a, the government the government's figure is 183 million which is not small but of course billion is a thousand million it's, it's th yeah that's that's a lot more than that so yeah, that's that's again the media but go ahead it's not your fault no, no and thank you thank you for correcting that point but I, I think the the work that he did is so important in terms of preserving some of those fundamental civil liberties and really it was it was the crossroads of, of the three-headed dog of cyber drugs and finance a lot of people upset at high levels of the government that you know ha have have a vested interest in controlling those things is is that true it's my theory um and one of the reasons i believe that is because the biggest drug seller on silk road who was convicted of that got 10 years and he had the same offense levels as Ross. Ross was never even uh, charged with actually selling any drugs. He was, he had a platform. But he just he made the technology. Platform. He didn't deal drugs on the platform. So it's like saying Jeff Bezos, because there was cyanide on, on Amazon and a young girl bought some and killed herself with it and her mother was suing Amazon, that he is responsible for her death. And it's like, you know, there is dangerous things on the internet. There are knives and there are guns and there are you know all kinds of things sure can we hold website hosts responsible for this and um so that's the big constitutional question here too but uh, in any case um i don't think the drugs were really a concern as much of a concern or even much it's the, the disparity of sentencing shows that sure. however um it came out in snowden papers uh later that the NSA was urgently tracking Bitcoin users. They're very alarmed about Bitcoin, this new upstart currency. And right before uh, Silk Road was taken down and Ross was arrested, um, I think it was really the Bitcoin. That and, well, the judge even said, we know you started the site for philosophical reasons, and we're just not sure that's a philosophy you've left behind. This is, um, you know, it's voluntary interaction. Uh, non-aggression principle, free market, and apparently that's very threatening 
So she felt she he had to literally have a death walking death sentence because of this philosophy. Now we live in America. We're supposed to have, as you we talked previous uh, prior to the show, First Amendment rights, and um, we shouldn't be caged for our philosophy. Absolutely not. And I, yeah. Especially we see we see it now uh, how those things really have kind of they they have dire implications in terms of whether or not we preserve the right to privacy, the right to free speech. Getting back to Ross's case specifically, I'm interested in hearing more on your take about the Fourth Amendment violations. There's a lot of controversy around how were the servers obtained and was it even an, a, a legal search? Um, can, can you offer any insight into that? Well, actually Fourth Amendment questions went all the way to the Supreme Court with Ross's case. And the server is always this question hanging out there, but, um, and the government agent, um, Chris Tar Christopher Tarbell, who claimed how he found it, experts all over the world called foul. They said, this is gibberish, this is absurd. This is a lie, basically. And se several of them uh, said the NSA was involved. They put this out there, it's public, that these experts, world-renowned experts in cryptography and all of that, said this about the government's evidence, but, um, you know, it, uh, they had all their ways to say, well, uh, you know, we didn't need a warrant. We had this MLAT treaty with Iceland, which actually ended up being, oh, whoops, sorry, we didn't actually have an MLAT treaty. I'm sorry, we got that wrong several months later. And so it, 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 what boiled down to was it was never, it, it just didn't become an issue. Uh, I regret that. I think I mean, I didn't have a say in it, but I think that might have been a big mistake uh, not to push it. We did somewhat. However, there's other Fourth Amendment issues. Um, and the Supreme Court question was there's something, and we should all be concerned about this, there's something called the third party doctrine that was ba is based on a de four decades old Supreme Court ruling about the dial telephone and whether numbers dialed uh, can be used without seen without a warrant by the government and the Supreme Court said yeah it's okay three justices said it's not okay this is just the phone number think of what we have on our phones now I mean they're they're computers of course so there's all kinds of relevant information our our religious affiliation our sexual orientation our medical records our um, you know political persuasions and because of the third party doctrine that is this antiquated thing, the government has unfettered access to all of our internet information without a warrant, without probable cause, in secret, with no oversight, legally in the courts. And what so, the. So, so, and just to, to amplify the magnitude of that. If you're an outspoken individual or you believe in something that is contrary to uh, to a particular narrative, that gives the government and law enforcement carte blanche to dig through your all of your personal stuff and find something that they could potentially charge you with as a crime. Is that a fair scenario? Yeah, or blackmail you or blackmail an official or there's a you know to pursue political enemy or whatever, and they don't need a reason. They, they don't, don't need even need, that's what probable cause is, is that you say to the court, we have good reason to do this, and we need your permission. They don't have that. They don't, under the third party doctrine, no problem, just scarf it all up, use it how you like. And it's been a question in the Supreme Court. Uh, and in fact, um, Sandra Sotomayor spoke out against it. But at the same time, uh, they didn't, it was brought to their attention, and with other things at the, to the Supreme Court in Ross's case, and they just didn't want to deal with it or whatever, and they punted it. It's something we should all be concerned about. It's shredding our Fourth Amendment privacy protections. And, you know, really, uh, the courts are not keeping up with the technology, you know? I mean, it's one yeah. thing to have a number on a dial, dialed on a dial telephone. I mean, a lot of people listening right now probably don't, I've never even seen a dial telephone. <laughs> my, my son picked, uh, picked mine up the other day and said, Dad, what's this? What is this? <laughs> he asked me, what is this? And, um, you know, but we carry these little computers around that track us and, and reveal all kinds of things about us that really the government should at least have to have a warrant. 
it's not like they can't go in, but they have to, that's what warrants are for. You know, so it's not sure. all in secret for them to do what they want. It's 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 very frightening. Mm. So that was a big part of it. Um, also during Ross's another Fourth Amendment issue that came up was that they, without a warrant, without all that stuff, permission from the court, uh, went to his home, Ross's home, and and shown a directional antenna where he they could track him from room to room, from outside, no warrant, in secret. So they could be doing that to any of us at any time they like. Wow. No warrant. This is a precedent for that. That's just another thing. I mean, it's, 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 it's a very important um, case, as you said, for many reasons, but the Fourth Amendment is a big one. And the Fourth Amendment is under assault in our country, let's face it. We're this, it's like we're living in a surveillance state. We, we I don't feel like I, I just figure, oh, they're listening. I can't, you know, they're w tracking me. Sure. You know that, I mean, I know this really ads that pop up on my computer, they've been tracking me. Right. Yeah. We, 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 get, we give these permissions almost really unknowingly, Siri, Google Maps, Alexa, we're, we're giving all of this information up to be surveyed. And, and you know, it's, it, right, we, we put blinds on our windows. We have a bathroom door. We, we obviously, we value privacy but we're just relinquishing control of, the, of mm. the data and the information that is unique to us that could be used for malicious purposes. And certainly in Ross's case, it, it has been. I don't, don't think that there's much of a question about that. How is Ross doing and what's the status of his case? Can you give us an update? Yeah, um, sure. Um, so with the Supreme Court, uh, he exhausted all his direct appeals. There's nowhere else to go. You go to the Supreme Court and you don't get uh, relief there, it's over. Um, but but there is, there's two different things that could still potentially free Ross. One is, um, it's, it's a Hail Mary, to be honest. It's something that, it's a last ditch effort. It's a, not in the uh, criminal court, it's in the civil court and it's, um, really talking about your um, your lawyer and how your lawyer was ineffective. And sometimes, for example, with the, um, you know, sentence that could be changed or, you know, it could be, there could be relief there. We're working on it. There's also the other option of a commutation of the sentence by the president of the United States. Any federal prisoner or, or person in the federal system has to have, the president of the United States has to do it. If you're in a state case, the governor does it of the state. So we are working very hard to get the attention of President Trump. He's shown a um, heart for, for pardoning people. And, um, you know, we have almost 300,000 signatures on our, our clemency petition addressed to him. And where, and where can people find that, Lynn? That's on freeross.org. Everything is on freeross.org and a lot of information if you want to dig in. It's very heavily footnoted with citations to all kinds of very solid information. And But um, the, the petition is in a big banner on the front home page. And um, all you really need to know to feel okay about signing it is not, you don't have to know all the details of Ross's case. It's does a first time peaceful, nonviolent, offender deserve double life plus 40 years without parole? I mean, think about it. It puts us all in peril that this kind of sentence can be given to someone. It's, it's, it's very, very wrong. And it really needs to be corrected because it sets a precedent for other people in the system. And um, it really is, an, it's, it's wrong in so many ways. And especially because I think it was used for political reasons and um you know i just it, i think that if we can convince the president that this was wrong that this sentence needs to be corrected essentially is what we're asking we're not asking for a pardon we're not asking we're just saying the sentence isn't right i think he'll see that i think it, there's a good chance he'll see that and uh, we have the other thing i want to point out that's on our website is a widespread support page with very eminent people well, lots of different people, some more famous than others, but page after page after page of quite well-known or accomplished people um, saying this isn't right. And it's from both sides of the political aisle. It's not, 
you know, only libertarian or only, you know, Democrat or only, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's a very big mix. And um, they're all, you know, it's very, it's so horrible, you know, that it, it, most people are just horrified by this sentence. So we're hopeful. Certainly, we'll, we'll link out to that. And some, some of the notable people, presidential candidates, uh, actors, Keanu Reeves is, is one that, that comes to mind, the founder of Oculus yeah. Rift. These are very accomplished, well-educated individuals. So whether or not you have the time to dive in and pick apart all the pieces of the case, there are very credible individuals who clearly support everything that Lynn is, is talking about. So I, I encourage you to check it out. And we're certainly going to link uh, directly to, to that page as well. Thank you. The, the, the billboard campaign in Times Square, you know, it's gotten some attention, obviously, from, from, from people that don't want to do the research on the case. What's the, what's the support been like? Is it creating conversation? Is it creating introducing Ross's case to, to people that maybe haven't been familiarized with it? How's the feedback been? Well, initially, we, you know, there were some articles written about it um, and uh, lots on social media, lots of um, attention because it's quite the, the thing, you know, it's like there's this big, you know, I don't think Ross ever thought he'd be on in time, a billboard in Times Square. Um, and it was really from the generosity of a libertarian leaning, uh, freedom loving supporter who has been had it on his heart to help Ross for a long time and came up with this idea. He's a New Yorker. And um, it was, it's a good time in a way because billboards are cheaper right now. It's a buyer's <laughs> market. <laughs> and, uh, but there are buses that go through. It's not like there's nobody there, but hopefully they'll, it'll come back. Um, it's going to be up until the election. So um, yeah, it's just, it's just another way to call attention to the case. And we really appreciate what he did. And um, hopefully some people will, you know, see the website and go there or whatever. Um, I think it's an interesting use of a billboard. We were talking about that earlier, you know, you only, I always thought of billboards are just ads and things like that, but they could, billboards are communication. They're, you know, they're um, part of our free speech rights, right? So absolutely. Um, I think, you know, that, yeah, it's an interesting, innovative way to use a billboard. Well, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that that individual came forward and yeah, that, that is the unique power of out of home is that it can communicate any message at scale, big, fast, in a hurry. In fact, the, the way that I, I found out about it was, was through Reddit. Um, oh. it, it, a picture of the billboard, uh, somebody had you know posted it uh, in Reddit and it got a lot of traction there. So, uh, so I, I hope that it is bringing new attention, new light to, to what you're doing. Anybody that's listening to this, obviously we have a unique community in the out of home space. Yeah. Please he, you know, hear, hear what Lynn is saying, that this is, this is a freedom of speech issue. This is a, 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 this is just a fundamental freedom issue. I'll, I'll point out, and Lynn and I were talking about before we kicked off the show here, is that uh, there are countries in Africa, Nigeria is one that comes to mind, I believe it's Nigeria, I'll have to check it, was that the government must approve a message on a billboard before it ever gets posted. So take everything that we've talked about here today and consider whether or not you want to live in a country where the government can decide what goes up on the thing that we love so much, which is out of home advertising, especially when there are social impact causes like Ross's that need to that need to be communicated to the masses that people need to know about there are real implications for our business for our freedoms as americans and uh, and, I, and i hope that anyone that hears this does get involved visits freeross.org uh, lynn wh what else are there any other ways that we can help freeross.org has a lot of information yeah. um well if anyone has any uh political connections you know i am trying to get the attention of president trump it doesn't have to be at that level you know it could be any uh, any political connections. Of course, we always need donations because we have like all these lawyers. <laughs> you know, sure. Lawyers are very expensive people. Um, you know, I also wanted to say, um, you know, the billboard, it did really make an impact because it got all over social media. It was different than putting up a meme. 
It impressed right. people that it was actually in the physical space of Times Square. I mean, and it was interesting because it was above a diner that has freedom next to it, a big sign. It was kind of perfect. Awesome. But, um, and I was thinking about other billboards I'd seen. And one was um, recently in California, uh, driving down the highway, it said, cannabis delivered to your door. And I'm like, wait a second, that's what the whole Silk Road thing was doing seven years ago. And now there's billboards up exactly. And of course, Bitcoin has become a worldwide thing. And sure. you know, so many of the things that were really scary and dangerous and wrong in people's minds when Ross was on trial have become acceptable parts of our you know, society, or at least are becoming that. And um, Ross is still sitting in a cage facing death in prison. So it's it's very that's the other thing. It's like this should not this should not be allowed to stand. And and anyone, I just want to make a pitch for criminal justice reform because there are he's not unique. There are people just for marijuana serving life sentences. Uh, he knows one of them. Um, it happens to be in Col his prison happens to be in Colorado where it's legal on the state level. Give me a break, but. Um, you know, this is, um, this didn't used to happen, these kind of horrible sentences. It's happening now and it really needs to change. Uh, give people a second chance, give them a chance to have some redemption, to make uh, amends. You know, that is part of our American values. And um, look, I, I get it for, you know, violent, you know, and, and, you know, there's, sure, there's people that need, society needs to be protected from. But I wouldn't say nonviolent, drug offenders or any nonviolent person needs to die in a cage. And that, you know, someone said, we need to put people in prison who we're afraid of, not who we don't agree with. And there's a slippery slope there of caging people for philosophies or, or for actions that didn't harm anyone else, you know? So that's, we're at a tipping point here. There's a lot of <laughs> very concerning things going on, and um, I, but I really think this needs to happen. I agree. And we're going to do everything that we can, obviously, to, yes, to continue to support freeross.org to help get Ross's case in front of the president, because you're, you're absolutely correct. The, 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 the things that went on, whether they were illegal at the time, they're not now, and, and it's, it's truly an unfortunate uh, circumstance that, that we can all learn from and and do right by so lynn thank you so much for, for thank you for us. having so, me absolutely absolutely yeah. we'll make sure to link out to everything that we've talked about here today so that you can get more information please i encourage you to share this with other folks in your in your network whether they're involved with out of home advertising or not this is the story behind the billboard this is the story of ross Ulbricht a man who was looking to preserve the civil liberties that, that we all have seemed to take, him for, take for granted. So uh, Lynn, thanks again. Uh, Thank you, for Tim. For being here. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. I'm just gonna stop uh, pressing